Hi everyone and welcome back for another Shooter AI tutorial episode. In this episode we're going to carry on what we were doing from what we were doing last time which was creating uh, an enemy be able to shoot from cover. Last episode we managed to get him to hide behind cover uh, so he goes find a space and uh, crouches behind it. So what we're going to be doing today is uh, tidying this up a little bit and then trying to get the workings of him uh, be able to shoot from cover so standing up shooting and sitting back down again. So what the the crux of this whole system is that in fact we're going to be running multiple behavior trees on our ai so at the moment our behavior tree we've got set up such as this where we uh disconnected it from our previous work and we started making the uh cover work so what i'm going to actually do is i'm going to put this into a separate behavior tree and reconnect this back up here so i'm going to go into my content browser add a new behavior tree and we're going to go enemy shoot cover and this bit, this behavior tree is going to focus on the whole act of uh anything to do with covering so finding cover shooting from cover and leaving cover so in here we're going to have a selector and we're basically going to take what we've got here and put it over here and we want them to use the same blackboard okay there's no harm in doing so so this over here we're going to choose the blackboard enemy bb click save okay so with that in mind we can now set up those tasks that we've got here so we've got find cover and get into cover so find cover or it goes into sequence first of all sequence and then we've got find, nope. Oh, it's a run EQS, that's why. Run EQS that we named find cover. So find cover and a get into cover task as well. Okay. So I'm gonna rename this whole sequence find cover. It doesn't do anything to the actual game. It just helps us organize things uh, to where we want to be. And I'm also going to change the name of this one. Find. Ooh. Cover. Okay, so we've got a selector going here. And it's gonna, it could select to find cover. So... When it's in cover, we have this get into cover task here. And this task is actually setting up a, uh, a value on our enemy. Say enter cover is in cover. Okay. So when we call this enter cover thing into from our get into cover task, it's going to take it to crouch and turn on this boolean. With this boolean, turned on we and this crouch being made after this we can make it call that um enemy ai okay uh, um, enemy behavior tree instead so for this i need to get my ai controller and i need to cast this because this is a generic ai controller um so i'm going to cast to our specific one Cast to enemy AI. Click that up. And as enemy AI, we're going to run behavior tree. And I'm going to tell it to use the shoot cover. So it is now going to run that behavior tree instead when this happens. <clears throat> okay, so we've got is in cover being put up here. What I then want to do is uh change this to be uh on the on the blackboard as well so on my blackboard i need a new key boolean there we go is in cover and click save and i can do it in multiple places i could do it here or i could do it actually here uh in fact i think what we'll do is we'll do it in here get into cover so 
we're going to make a new variable and I'm going to call it pb underscore in cover. And that's going to be a blackboard key selector. And from there, we're going to drag that out and should get. And then from there, we're going to go set blackboard value as a ball. And we'll tick the tick box. Click compile. So now, when uh, our behavior tree, where is it? This one. Uh, when this one goes into get into cover, it's going to set the blackboard value is in cover to be true. So what I want it to be, I want it only use to find cover. Um, not when I not find cover. I want to only shoot it from cover if it is actually in cover. So here I need to do another selector, a uh, sequence. Sorry, new sequence. And we're going to add a decorator to this. Choose the blackboard decorator. And the blackboard key we want to use is going to be that is in cover. And we want to see that it is set. If it is set, this gate will open and allow it to go into the sys sequence here. Um, that reminds me, we have to go into our get into cover and turn on the eyeball here next to BB in cover. Compile it. Go back to your behavior tree and you'll see it now appear on the task itself. We want to choose which key it's using. So uh, we want to make sure they're using the correct one. So BB in cover is going to be using in cover and BB move is going to be move location. And we want to go find cover here and we'll make sure it's using the same key that we had used here. So move location, move location. Okay, save that. Okay, so this sequence is actually going to be the actual shooting from cover. So in this node here, we can go shoot from cover. So our selector is going to go down here first of all and check whether or not we're in cover. If we are, it's going to shoot from cover. Otherwise, it's going to foul this, go back up the branch, try the next one, and continue down the found uh, find cover task route. So now we have to set up some tasks here to tell it to shoot from cover. So the shoot from cover has uh, multiple steps. It has to stand up, shoot for a period of time, then crouch back down. Okay. Um, so shoot from cover, we need to do the stand up, shoot, and sit down. Or crouch rather. Um, okay, so the shooting task we're going to do is a new task. BT task blueprint base. And I'm going to rename it straight away. Call it shoot from cover. Okay, so this thing is going to do on execute AI. It's going to tell the pawn to stand up. So the pawn is the enemy. And we're doing basically what we do here. So we'll crouch, we're going to take it to uncrouch. Okay, so to shoot from cover, I'm going to tell the controlled pawn uh, to uncrouch. So pawn down here, and I don't know if we can do it straight away. No, so we have to cast it first of all. Cast to uh, a character or the enemy, either one's fine because they both have the character component. I'm just going to do it enemy as enemy, uncrouch, like so. So well, as soon as this receives this, it's going to uncrouch, so it's going to stand up. And then once it's standing up, it's going to start shooting. So what I'm going to do here is on tick, receive tick AI. We're going to tell it to shoot. So our enemy, uh, where is it? We have a start shooting and a stop shooting. So we want to tell it to start shooting um, in our task. Oh, is it shoot from cover? There it is. Um, so we don't actually need the tick actually at all. I don't think we'll, we'll see if we can get away with that using it. So on the execute AI as enemy, we're going to do start shooting, and that will continue to start shooting. 
Now we want it to go doing this for a period of time. Um, so we want to maybe randomize that. It's totally up to you what you how long you want to do it for. Um, either case, we need to set up a timer. So timer by event. And the event we want to use is a custom event. called stop shooting and we're going to hook up these little red boxes together so go there and there to link that event to this so this event timer we've got a time limit here um, I'm going to put in just a hard value at first we can make this a bit more random later on so let's say it shoots for uh, three seconds and after that, it's going to call this event to let it stop shooting. So I could do the casting thing again and do all that nonsense, but what I'm actually going to do to make it a bit neater and a bit more efficient is after this cast, I'm going to promote that to a variable. So I'm going to call it enemy pawn and hook that up. Ooh. And I can put that there if I want. And again, making it tidier, I can just use that reference instead. Okay, that looks a bit neater, doesn't it? So on the stop shooting, we're going to call that reference back out, which is get. And from there, we're going to call this stop shooting function. Like so. Once we've done that, we then have to tell it to sit down. So enemy pawn, we drag this back out again and go crouch. And then finally, we can finish execute. As a success. Compile. So, to run through this again, the task is going to get the pawn and cast it to the enemy to find out, uh, to make sure we've got an enemy pawn. Then we're going to restore that as a, a reference. We're going to tell that reference to uncrouch, tell it to start shooting. And then we're going to set a timer up for three seconds, not looping. After three seconds, this stop shooting event will uh, occur. And the enemy pawn reference is going to tell it to stop shooting, calling that function on our enemy, stop shooting. And tell it to crouch again, and then finish, finally finish the execute. So this whole task will last for three seconds. Okay. So we may need to put some delays in there to make it a bit more normal looking. But we'll see how this fares as is. So we're going to go back into our behavior tree and we've got a shoot from cover sequence there. We can go and put in our shoot from cover task like so. Click save and da -da -da -da. I think that'll do it. So let's try that out and see what that looks like. Oh, sorry. We have to go back to our enemy BT here and we need to disconnect what we've done here and hook these up to the old ones that we've done in earlier episodes. Like so. Okay, so. <clears throat> so now we have to tell it when to find cover. So I'm going to tell it to find cover straight away, just so we test this out. So on my enemy um, AI, so we should find out enemy AI. <clears throat> We've got a run behavior tree. We, we're going to change this just for now, change it to shoot from cover behavior tree. So we'll just run that straight away and test that. So play, he'll run to cover, shoot for three seconds. And I think it's coming so quickly, you can see him jolting up and down. So we have to put a little delay on there. So on the shoot from cover here, I'm going to add a decorator to this task and we're going to do a cooldown on it. Um, so we're going to look for five seconds after execution and return failed. So this basically means it's going to enter this, run it, and after after it's finished, it's going to lock it down for five seconds so it can't run again for another five seconds. So I'm going to click save and see what happens there. So it shoots and you should crouch. Stop shooting for five seconds. And shooting away. Okay. So now I have to tell him to make sure he's shooting at me. Okay, at the player. So 
we've got to shoot from cover but we have to actually take to aim at the player so the aiming part we've actually already done in our enemy b2 so here we've got the focus on the target location okay so the target location we're going to go into our enemy shoot cover behind that we're going to put in the focus and put in the target location click save and bb target da, 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 double check what we got here set a focal point each task yeah okay um i think we did a bug there we have to fix yeah so the bug is in our focus we've got so set focal points this bb target blackboard key however we haven't set the target location it's going to be a problem for both of these okay so we've got a run eqs query happening here to find the player we just want to do that query again so um let's do, do, do go into i'm getting lost here yeah run eqs set to find the player and put the resulting key into target location click save and let's play so it shoots at me five seconds up and shoot so notice he isn't turning towards us after he shot his first bullet so that'll do for this episode and uh, we've got some uh, functionality in there we just need to update it to work a bit better because it's not aiming at the player now um but we've got him so he can find cover he runs into cover and we'll stand up and shoot every five seconds okay so we're going to continue working on this in the next episode and make him whilst he's shooting to look for the player and aim at the player the whole entire time whilst he is shooting okay thanks very much for watching if you want to see that next part right now, you head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley. And you can, from just $1 a month, you can watch all the next videos and other locked videos we have uh, for just $1. Okay, that's an early before anyone else. Big thank you to everyone who supported me thus far. Um, wouldn't be doing it without you guys, so thank you so much for your support. And hopefully we'll get to a point where I can do this full time and make loads more videos for you guys. Thanks so much for watching and I uh, hope you've liked this video. Please leave a comment below, uh, below if you have any questions or any suggestions you'd like to see. Thanks very much and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.